I'm Kat and this tutorial is for a DIY bracelet just like this one. It has chain and rhinestones and a pop of color on it. I really love it. I love how um, flashy this one is. I mean it's a really flashy bracelet. And what I like about this one is that it's really heavy duty. <laughs> duty. Yeah, I'm 12. It's really solid. It's a nice big solid bracelet and it feels more like something that you'd buy rather than something that you'd make. For this, you're going to need a pair of pliers. I'm actually using two because I happen to have them and it makes opening the jump rings easier. You'll need some jump rings, a lobster clasp, enough chain to go twice around your wrist, and then I've cut my chain into two lengths, some rhinestone chain, enough to be the length of one of your halves of the chain. I'm gonna cut off the extra later, and some embroidery floss. So the first thing I already did was cut my length of chain in half. And next I'm going to take my rhinestone chain and measure that to the same length as my chain. One of the halves. Most of the time you can even just pull these out without cutting it. You can use scissors to cut through it because it only has these tiny little metal flaps in between. And next I'm going to take one of my jump rings. I'll just open that up with my two pairs of pliers, like so, and I'm going to connect the first link on each of my lengths of chain with a jump ring, like that. Close it up. I'll also, making sure none of the chain is twisted, connect the last two links together. Close it back up. And now you're ready to get started. And once you've connected your two links of chain, you're going to take the bundle of embroidery floss that you have and gather all the ends as evenly as possible, like so. And then you're going to put those through. I have this little extra scrap of lanyard that I had laying around. You can use an extra string that's easy to maneuver that's a little bit thicker. And that's going to make it easy to maneuver your embroidery floss, but it's not completely necessary if you're good at gathering up the ends. And put it around my bundle of floss, like so. And pass it through the first link on one side of my chain. Then pull it through. Now I'm gonna tie a knot as close to my ends as possible onto that link. Not too close because you don't want it to slip out, but sort of like that. So once you've tied your embroidery floss onto one side of your chain, you've got your jump ring and you want to make sure that stays above where your embroidery floss is going to be. So I've tied it on and I'm just going to twist my embroidery floss and put it back through the other side of the chain, and it's going to go around the back, twist it again, and bring it through the front. So then once that is a little bit more secure, I'll bring in my rhinestone chain, set that on top. and put the embroidery floss in between the first two rhinestones. It's gonna go around, and again, we're still on the first two links on here. I'm gonna twist that embroidery floss again, put it back through the left side of chain, bring it around the back, 
so that's nice and secure. And bring it forward, making sure I have all the ends of this right here, kind of back tucked away. Bring it around the back and bring it forward through the second link. Put it in between the next two rhinestones. So the second rhinestone and the third rhinestone. Twist it. Put it back through the second link on the left chain. Bring it around the back. Bring it forward through that second link again. I'm going to put it between that second and third rhinestone one more time. Back through the second left chain link one more time. Then bring it around the back of the bracelet. Again, making sure all the ends from that original knot are being contained. Twist it, bring it forward through the third link finally. And now that I'm at the end of my bracelet, I have wrapped my floss through the last two links a second time. And before I finish it off, I'm going to basically tie it in a knot with that last loop. And pull it tight. I forgot to mention you also need scissors, so um, yeah, cut the end off that. And you can just leave it like that, or if you want a little bit of extra security on your bracelet, you can put a couple dabs of super glue on that knot. Just like that. Once you're done with that, you're gonna open up the jump ring on the end of your bracelet and slip one side of the chain out. Then close that jump ring up again. So now only one side of your chain has a jump ring on it. You'll take another jump ring, open that up, and then put it on the other side of chain. Close that up. So originally they were there just to kind of help stabilize the bracelet while you made it. So now you've got both ends of chain that have jump rings on them. Then you'll take one more jump ring, slip it through, one side, then the other side, and then attach your lobster clasp to that, and close up that jump ring. Now you've got your lobster clasp on there. And on the other end, you can either add jump rings onto this end to hook it into, or you can also open this one up. Close it up. Open another jump ring to add to the other side. Close that up. Hook those onto Now you've got something for your lobster clasp to hook onto, and that is your finished bracelet.